everybody. Welcome to the SOS Small Business Success Podcast. I'm your host, Bonnie Bonadeo. We're all about building brands that help you survive while you're developing yourself to thrive. Because we know it to be true. Your business is waiting for you to grow. Um, and I want to help you do that. I want to help you do that. So today's uh, podcast title is called Lift Leadership. We're on episode 129. Um, when I did a radio show, I did a radio show once a week and I, I loved doing it. I loved having the, the really broad audience, obviously with a podcast in this case, I have not invested into having a really broad audience. Um, but I appreciate those of you that listen to me. And, um, I had a chance to share the podcast with a lot of people over the last few months because I was on the road. I had a chance to do quite a few Uh, educational sessions out at some of our industry shows and within um, some programs um, and salon environments Um, and I got to share the podcast and and I really expressed to people listen it's these podcasts are short you know 15 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes if I get a little carried away because um, I can do that at times but there's a lot of wealth of information and and ultimately what I want you to be able to do is think about how you are being as a leader and or a salesperson or a marketer. Now, I've spent a lot of time talking about leadership over the last few months because I've developed a program that is phenomenal and um, I'm in my soft launch of it right now. It starts up at the 1st of August. Uh, It's going into the full on launch um, after this session, these first few sessions get underway. Um, you know, just like anything, uh, I got to practice what I'm preaching. I got to practice what I'm doing as well. So, but leadership is one of my favorite topics. Communications is a part of that leadership. Speaking is a part of that leadership. And of course, branding is a part of that as well. They all kind of like formulate into this one giant circle of you can be a better leader and coach. Um, when you have good quality leadership skills, communication skills, speaking and branding skills. And I do that through the podcast. I do that through salon coaching. I do that through the SOS Leadership Academy programs. I do that within our Salon Intrigue Salon. I do that as a uh, brand me marketing coach as well. And then also if uh, people show interest in life coaching, which I haven't done a lot of life coaching in the last year. Uh, Honestly, we all need it. It's the one, it's the one transformational, transformational piece that changed my life. People need life coaching. So, uh, 2025, I'll, I'll expand on that arena as well. Now within the SOS brand, you guys know, I always talk about these five anchors, sales, operation, mindset, marketing, and education. Leadership touches on each and every one of those, even though it falls under an operations, you know, if you have strong leadership, all of these things, all of these can be like, say balls in the air, right? You're making things happen. Um, And today we're going to talk about lift leadership. So is it a push or a pull, right? There's the question that we're having. We know that we want to lead people and manage systems and policy. So then you have to think, what am I doing that is ineffective as a leader? And what am I doing that is effective as a leader? So I want you to think about kind of like this push-pull scenario here. So... If you think about a sailboat, which obviously I always do the boat analogies here. If you think about a sailboat, then you want to be able to say, is the wind pushing or is the wind pulling the sailboat once the sails are up? And the truth is is it's both because the wind is pushing into the sails that is forcing the boat then to be pulled in a particular direction. Now, in regards to sailing, because it's you're not under motor, um, typically when you're sailing in this case, you're kind of going in the direction with the wind. So this is why tacking and jibbing is, is important um, because you're going to create this zigzag pattern of being able to go and then I need to change the direction of my sails that I'm going in order for the wind to push in and pull me into a different direction. So there's always that push-pull effect that's happening, which creates lift, moving the boat forward, and a zigzag pattern. The opposite of that would be like an airplane. So it's the same, it's the same thing. So the engines are supporting 
the speed and momentum. The wind, of course, is creating the lift. Um, but the fact that it's that it is, um, you know, horizontal versus vertical like a sailboat, it's creating that lift with a push pull effect too. So different scenario, but the same kind of dynamics here that we're talking about. And so I want you to think about push and pull leadership. So let's look at push leadership. Push leadership would be basic skills. I'm having to push somebody to understand newer, more technical skill sets. Um, I'm pushing and in a way of uh, a certain type of communications. Um, they have only so much experience. Their timing on things may not be very effective at this time. Their time invested in what they know to be true would be limited. And these are all newly learned skills that as a leader, I'm kind of in a push mode. I'm gonna push you to learn this skill. I'm gonna push you to practice this skill. And I'm gonna push you to keep practicing this skill until the technical piece aligns, the communication piece aligns, the experience starts to be more easeful, the timing is good. And all of that is because your time invested into this new skill. So your apprentice or your assistant or protege type programs that you have within your salon could be, or somebody that maybe has less than five years experience, you might be in a push leadership role. A pull leadership would be where they have some moderate to advanced skills. And this would be that they have mid to advanced technical skills. They know what they're doing, um, but, there's, but there's always room for improvement. And because our trends change in our industry, we always have an opportunity to learn a different technique or a different way to do it. They definitely have more improved communications. This is typically people that have experience of five years plus. They have effective timing in order to manage a day of clients. It's an easeful investment. In other words, they see that if, that if they need more, it's an easeful conversation of them making the investment into it because they're gonna see the return on investment because they already have the basics down. And of course, it's really, it's, it's enhancing existing skills. So it's just taking basic skills and being a little bit more advanced because they've been, been performed over and over again. Now, lift leadership is, falls into understanding that both of those might be necessary with any one team member that you have at this point. But if you look at the graph here that I'm showing, it's, and it's divided into three sections. So let's say 25% of it is, I know how to do certain things. I know certain things. 25% of it is I don't know certain things, but am willing to learn certain things. And then 50% of it is I don't know what I don't know. And that's where I want you as a leader to be present in, okay? Now, yes, of course, you need to kind of have an understanding of where your team is at. They know these certain skills. And then you also have the understanding of they don't understand or they don't have experience or expertise yet in these skills, but I have access. I have resources to be able to teach them to be better at that I don't know skills. But the I don't know what I don't know is the part that you as a leader have to, that's where you need to adapt and be flexible in. Because you can't keep, you can't have somebody that has a problem of, say, not having fear of doing um, a men's haircut, okay, or using clippers, we'll say. You can't be like, okay, well, we're just going to put you through a training class. Yes, that's going to help, but there might be something else behind that that is having them fearful of taking this on. And that's the part as a leader that you want to be able to get to, the I don't know what I don't know part. And this is really maximizing your emotional intelligence skills, understanding how to be an emotional intelligent leader. And that requires you to have curiosity, empathy, intuitiveness, being able to see what might be behind that scene, uh, understanding human hardwiring, understanding people's fear responses when they react a particular way in certain situations that um, 
you might be surprised by it. Or they react differently in a situation than maybe how you would react or what you're familiar with. So understanding fear responses, truly understanding that emotional and social connection that's necessary in order to have people not see it as a tactical approach to something, but an emotional approach to something. And of course, this goes beyond learned skills, okay? This is, this is kind of this hardwiring, how we're put together, how we grew up, um, how we learned to be adaptable and flexible from early stages of our lives to adulthood. So it's, again, it all wraps into leadership skills. And when, when you as a leader stay in that space of, they don't know what they don't know. That's you truly being present in another, in a, in a way that helps them to become, with another, that helps them to become transformational. Okay, it helps them to see a transformational progress with this. So you start to see confidence. You start to see um, them appearing better, standing taller, looking more professional, um, adapting, uh, in being feeling included, um, uh, taking on leadership uh, elements within there, uh, speaking up more, contributing more to the team. When all of those things are taking place, then you've, what you've really done is you've seen that this push and this pull and then adding in the EI leadership skills is really where you have to be present. So I want you to think about what can you do to lift your team? If it's just in that tactical world of, this is what they don't know, you're limiting yourself as a leader to be able to grow and scale not only your people, but your business. So you have to then think, you know, what do you value? What's in most important to you to nurture, mentor, coach, express, and align with another that's going to improve human results, not just hairdressing results or skills results, but human results. That's about you being an authentic EI leader. That's about them seeing and trusting and feeling safe in their environment to be able to get those results and support you along the way. This also is gonna to lead to people wanting to work for you for an extended period of time. So if any of that resonated with you and you see this opportunity to kind of find that little space for yourself of that EI component, I want you to check out the Ultimate Leaders course. Now again, like I said, I've got one starting up on August 5th. If it doesn't work for you, there's another one that's coming right at the top of 2025. But I want you to just go check out the website and I want you to just get a feel of what it can offer you. And it's a certification, 12 week certification program that's gonna have you be that leader that's gonna get in that space of, I don't know what I don't know. And that's the type of lead, that's, that's where I wanna be present as being that kind of leader. Okay, so it's sosleadershipacademy.com. Go check it out. But today I also want to offer you a free tool that's going to help you to be able to practice some of these spaces of being in that, uh, in that uh, emotional intelligent leadership arena. And it's called the Communication Cube. And this is really a framework for just having a breakthrough dialogue, being able to, to really dive deeper into that connective um, capacity as a leader. So it's, it's, it's really, again, it's just a framework. You guys It's de designed to support you as a leader in team conversations, conflict resolution, one-on-one -on -one coaching and getting the outcomes that you want. It's a method for service providers uh, to streamline consultations, rebooking clients, selling home care. Um, and there's a little training piece that goes along with this. So you can go to the QR code right here that if you're watching this, but if you're listening to this from my podcast, then I want you to go to communicationcube.com and cube is spelt with a Q, Q-U-B-E, communicationcube.com. You can download this template. It's kind of a practice to be able to have these breakthrough dialogues and to be able to see that missing piece that you might be doing and trying to get people from point A to point B and um, put it to use. Set up a free session with me if you want to, to have, to put it into effect even more after you even, after you listen to the little mini training session that is attached to this. Um, and then of course, uh, I look forward to seeing you in any one of my programs um, coming out this fall and going into 2025. 
you always have options to be able to set up a free call with me to be able to kind of, you know, have that SOS moment with me. Like this is what's happening in my business. I'm not quite sure how to do this from a leadership standpoint. And you can go to SOSSaloncoaching.com. Um, there is a button on there that will get you right onto my calendar. And I look forward to having that chance to be able to connect with you and help you grow so that your business can grow and your people as well. All right. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you guys soon.